Hello, welcome to this edition of the 6 p.m. Prime Time newscast on Equinox Television live from my headquarters in Cameroon's economic capital Douala. I am Bable Jonathan. In our top stories in this edition of the news, Cameroon's Minister of Territorial Administration and uh, Territorial Administration, Atanganji Paul, warns against individual collection of funds for the fight against COVID-19 in the Republic of Cameroon. Minister Atanganji Paul, in a release has said that the raising of funds by individuals and political parties for the fight against COVID-19 is illegal. There are some political parties who are undertaking initiatives to raise funds to help victims of the COVID-19 pandemic in the Republic of Cameroon. Also in this podcast, we shall talk about the impact of COVID-19 on food security. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us in this edition of the news. Latest figures on COVID-19 in the Republic of Cameroon indicate that as of yesterday, the country recorded 700 and 30 confirmed cases of the COVID-19, 10 deaths and 60 persons who have been successfully uh, treated from coronavirus in the central region, 415 confirmed cases and uh, 46 persons successfully uh, treated in the littoral region, 255 confirmed cases and 14 uh, treated in the west region, 51 cases, south region, 5 cases, southwest 4 uh, cases. These are information from the Ministry of uh, Public Health and of course it is estimated that by April 2020, Cameroon would have recorded 10,400 cases of the COVID-19. We shall be giving you greater details and the figures have continued increasing the figures of confirmed cases of COVID-19 and the deaths and persons treated from the uh, infection. Uh, also increasing the Minister of Public Health who will of course be giving all the figures in his uh, daily press briefing on public on the pandemic in the Republic of Cameroon and will be bringing to you uh, details on the COVID-19 and the fight against the pandemic in Cameroon. In the meantime, the Cameroon Renaissance Movement and some politicians are poised to raise funds for the fight against COVID-19 in the Republic of Cameroon. They have undertaken initiatives to raise some money to help victims of COVID-19. Details in this report compiled by Fomi Armstrong Sander. The coronavirus fundraising operation of the Cameroon Renaissance Movement's political party baptized Cameroon Survival Initiative, SCSI, has as objective to help Cameroonians combat COVID-19, according to party officials. Created on April 3, 2020, the project consists of financial contribution, contribution of food items, sanitary equipment and medical as well as logistical equipment to help people infected by the coronavirus and also people affected by the pandemic across Cameroon. Suvi Cameroon Survival Initiative, according to Professor Maurice Camto of the CRM Party, is a gigantic project composed of Cameroonians at home and in the diaspora, getting across political, ethnic, religious and philosophical backgrounds with the aim of making a difference within the Cameroonian community. The SCSI of the Cameroon Renaissance Movement's political party is structured into two main levels. The Patronage Committee, comprising renowned Cameroonian personalities from home and abroad. These groups of persons through their influence, authority and experience on social solidarity are expected to give due visibility to the project. Section 2, known as the Management Committee, will be charged with strategic planning, the collection and the distribution of funds and materials collected. The section is further segmented into two, comprising the Health and the Social Committee. 
apart from the Cameroon Renaissance Movement's political party, a member of parliament of the Cameroon Party for National Reconciliation, CPNR political party, Honorable Noran Fosin, announced the launch of her COVID-19 solidarity plan in Cameroon beginning April 10, 2020. And the political party of Honorable Nuran Fortsin, uh, the political party led by Honorable Cabral Libi, the Cameroon Party for National Reconciliation, has also announced a similar initiative to raise funds to help in the fight against COVID-19 and to assist victims of coronavirus in the Republic of Cameroon. And I indicated earlier that uh, some uh, experts are estimating that by April 20, 2020, Cameroon would have recorded 10,400 uh, cases and they are basing their estimates on calculations as according to medical uh, rules. They are indicating that at least uh, that one confirmed case has the potential of infecting at least 10 other uh, persons and the initiative that had been uh, taken to fight against uh, COVID-19, notably the fund raising by private uh, individuals and uh, political parties has been described as illegal by the Minister of Territorial Administration, uh, Tanganji Paul. He warns against such initiatives, indicating that only government has the right to undertake the raising of funds uh, within the context of the special fund against the COVID-19 put in place by the President of the Republic of Cameroon, Paul Beer. Details in this report by Innocent of territorial administration has frowned at some political party leaders and association who have launched an appeal for a public fundraising, thus disrespecting the law in place. According to a media release, Atanganji Paul prohibits such moves. Using the law, Atanganji Paul says the collection of funds during crisis and disaster period is regulated by law number 83 slash 002 of the 21st of July 1983, which gives right for the appeal of public generosity and decree number 85 slash 1131 of 14 August 1985 lays down the condition for authorization of an appeal for public generosity. According to the Territorial Administration boss, the disposition of this text doesn't give right to any individual or organization to call for a public fundraising without having an authorization from the Minister of Territorial Administration. He is now requesting that all of those concerns should close the bank accounts opened to this effect and give him a feedback without which they will be punished according to the law. Athanganji Paul is urging all commercial banks and other microfinance institutions with these accounts that they should immediately close them. The account numbers could be reopened after he must have given an authorization. Atanganji Paul is asking all goodwill Cameroonians to do their contributions towards the fight against COVID-19 following the rules laid down by the President of the Republic and supervised by the Prime Minister and Head of Government, Chief Dr. Joseph Diongute. We'll be taking a look at the legality of the decision of Minister Tanganji Paul in this newscast. And the COVID-19 pandemic is affecting all sectors of life in Cameroon and elsewhere around the world. And the agricultural sector in Cameroon is uh, one of the uh, sectors which is uh, badly affected by the coronavirus and the government is undertaking some uh, measures and actions to mitigate the impact of coronavirus on food security in the country. Take a listen to the Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Gabriel Bayrobi. The countries that supplies us cereal supplement have closed their borders, namely Vietnam, Philippines, Thailand and Latin American countries. On the other hand, reducing interurban mobility could be depleted, food reserves 
to urban and peri-urban areas. To respond to these threats, on the very high instruction of the Head of State, His Excellency Paul Biya, and under the coordination of the Prime Minister Head of Government, the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development, in association with its development partners, have undertaken the following actions. First, the distribution of short cycle quality seed maximum 90 days in all regions of the country. Second, the distribution of fertilizer, pesticide and insecticides in the production areas of priority crops. Third, the opening of certain production areas in collaboration with the decentralized territorial collectivities to allow food access to market. Fourth, the raising awareness of communities, cooperative and traditional rulers on setting up community granaries in order to have reserves. That was Cameroon's Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Gabriel Bairobi, speaking there on the measures and actions that the Cameroon government is uh, taking to mitigate the impact of coronavirus on food security in the country. And later in this newscast, we'll uh, take a look at the food security uh, situation of uh, Cameroon and projections that have emerged from a study carried out by the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development and the educational sector is also affected by the coronavirus pandemic and an information that has circulated on social media uh, indicating that the academic calendar has been changed, has been qualified as fake by the Minister of Secondary Education, Professor Pauline Nalovalionga. Take a listen to her. Coronians are always in a hurry. If it is for you, you will get it. We did not stop the class. The classes were stopped by the head of state. And the head of state will say when classes We are trying to work out the dates. And so if the document that was supposed to be between the ministries, that is basic education and secondary education, comes up. It was supposed to go to the Prime Minister's office. It's not meant for the problem. Okay. So that document, please ignore it. It is only the Prime Minister, the Head of State, who can tell us exactly when classes will begin. So they should stop informing the public with the wrong ideas. So that document is fake. Cameroon's Minister of Secondary Education, Professor Paulina Lovalionga, is uh, speaking there. In the meantime, administrative authorities are stepping up sensitization across the country to bar the way to the coronavirus here in Cameroon's economic capital. Douala, the senior division officer of the Uri Division, Mbutu Benjamin, went through some parts of the Douala 3 municipality sensitizing the population, traders, bike riders, and all other persons on the necessity to respect all the uh, rules and uh, regulations, notably all the measures taken by government to prevent the spread of COVID-19 and the sanitation uh, rules of the World Health Organization and uh, the putting on of a mask in particular was also highlighted by the senior division of the Uri division who handed over some uh, face mask to some inhabitants of the Dwala 3 municipality and he called on bike riders, other transporters and all other persons within the municipality to stop violating the measures put in place by government and the sanitation rules of the WHO against the, the coronavirus pandemic. Take listen to the senior division officer of the Uri Division, Mutu Benjamin. I come to sensitize the population that they have to respect the measure who have been indicted by the Prime Minister, head of the government. We have to observe the manners of to wash the, the hands. The have also to observe the, the distance between the neighbors. It is a very uh, a good measure that 
If you are very, very compact, it is probably that we can uh, have the, the disease. If the people not upset this measure, I think that is correct for me to ap apply the, 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 the sanctions. I think in the, in the days, uh, a few days, we can have a, a good decision about uh, this price of oil. Là, je suis venu aujourd'hui pour vous sensibiliser. Et le port du masque, c'est déjà bien. Vous portez déjà les masques, ça c'est bon. Le masque doit être désormais obligatoire. The divisional officer and the mayor of Botmakak in the central region of Cameroon are also undertaking similar initiatives to sensitize the population on the importance of respecting to the latter all the measures taken by government to prevent the spread of COVID-19 in the country and the sanitation rules of the World Health Organization. Immaculate Fogui has the details. The increasing number of COVID-19 positive cases in Cameroon has caused municipal and administrative authorities in Bot Makak in the Nyongankili Division Center region of Cameroon to take the bull by the horn by going on a door-to-door -door campaign to sensitize the population on what the coronavirus is and how to curb its spread. The divisional officer and his team reminded the population that the coronavirus is real. Thus, the population should respect government measures put in place against the epidemic. They stressed on the regular washing of hands, the wearing of face masks, and the respect of social distancing. All those organizing funerals have to understand that not more than 50 persons are expected to attend. If Manu Dibango, the music legend, could be buried by five persons, what more about us here? Here in the village, funerals is an opportunity for some people to eat, dance and drink. We don't want to lose any of you people. My first preoccupation is that you all are in good health. Reason why we had to carry out this door-to-door -door campaign. Though cases of COVID-19 have been reported in the central region of Cameroon, these local authorities say the door-to-door -door sensitization campaign is meant to avoid further contamination. And I told you earlier that we're going to talk about the food security situation of the Republic of Cameroon. The Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Gabriel Bayroube, says Cameroon, like many other African countries, are suffering, is suffering uh, the impact of uh, food uh, security challenges. And of course, these are uh, challenges that are uh, further made worse by security and other socio political crises affecting the respective uh, countries where food insecurity is a major problem. However, in Cameroon, the rich agricultural potential of the country and government measures are mitigating the impact of the food insecurity, according to Minister Gabriel Mbayarobi. Take a listen. There are more than a billion people world, worldwide who suffer from hunger and malnutrition, mainly in sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia. In the world today, one person dies of hunger every second and one child every five seconds. Ironically, at the same time, around two billion men and women are overweight or obese. Despite its agrometeorological potential, Cameroon is no exception to this situation. The results of the current food security situation that you have heard are the result of an of, of analysis that took place in a particular context. It is the first time since the adoption of the harmonized framework analysis that it covers all the 10 regions of Cameroon. Secondly, the analysis took place before the confirmation of a case of COVID-19 in our country, and it was necessary 
to readjust the results taking into account the context. In the northern part of the country, the off-season sorghum harvest has provided good food reserves. Likewise, the good rainfall recorded this year has not only enabled groundwater recharge for off-season off -season crops, but also favored a good yield and harvest of food and vegetable crops. In the southern part of the country, agro-meteorological factors favor the smooth running of the farming season. However, household stocks will be heavily depleted as a result of growing demand from urban and peri-urban areas during the current period, March to May. The northwest and southwest and west region Due to the socio-political crisis that has led to the abandonment of some agro-pastoral production areas and difficulties, taking of the nutritional situation of household, it is acceptable in the north, Adamawa, east, center, and south region, given the diversity of food consumed. However, this situation has deteriorated in the northwest and southwest region and in the far north, which holds internally depressed persons. A study by Cameroon's Minister of Agriculture, the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development, reveals that between June and August 2020, 2,600,000 Cameroonians, that is 11% of the population, will experience food crisis. And of course, there are other uh, details on this information that are contained in this extract of the Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Gabriel Bayrobi. In the literal region, the influx of internally depressed persons and the decline of economic activity have reduced household purchasing power. The phytosanitary situation remains under alert due to threats from pests such as armyworms and migratory locusts, crop destruction due to flooding in Jamare, Logon and Shari, and Mayodanai can also be noted. Out of 58 divisions analyzed, it appears that for the current period, March to May 2020, the food and nutrition situation of the population is good in 17 divisions a minimum phase and relatively acceptable in 30 divisions under pressure. However, there's a degradation in 11 divisions that are in the crisis phase in the northwest and southwest region, affected, as you know, by the socio political crisis. No division is presently in emergency or family first. It is estimated that 2,660,000 people, that is 11% of population, are in crisis situation or worse during this period. In the projected June, July and August 2020 period, the food and nutrition situation will remain good in 30 division minimal phase. However, 24 division will remain under pressure with a relatively acceptable food situation and four division in crisis. No division will be in an emergency or famine situation. An estimated 2,150,000 people, that is 8% of the population, will be in crisis situation or worse during this projected period.
The report coming up next in Osinazi takes us to one of the enclaved localities in the Republic of Cameroon, Kambele, in the east region of the country. Despite the fact that it is endowed with gold and other minerals, the community is enclaved than the localities than other localities in the Cameroon. It is more enclaves and uh, good roads, portable water, electricity, good schools and hospitals are lacking the people. People of Kambili are begging to survive in Osinazi. This is the state of the Kambili 3 Health Center. Just beside it is the government's primary school, which, since its existence, has been blessed with just a single modern structure. Access to basic social amenities remains a major challenge faced by the locals who rely on very local methods to exploit goods which the way and market for survival. According to the third class chief of Kambele 3 in Baturi, when they fall ill or have an accident at night, either they end up dying or fortunately gets to a far off health unit. Poor roads, no electricity and pipe on water, as well as limited stitches and main problems faced. Most of the boreholes run dry with the inhabitants switching to exposed wells. Water fished for consumption and other domestic purposes has no characteristic of potable water. The poor living conditions of the inhabitants have aroused questions where the money from sales of exploited gold go to. We canalize l'or, that is, to bring the product to the informal sector to the sector formal. The locals, in their numbers, use crude and hectic methods to exploit the natural resource to better their livelihood. Most of them tilt a disgruntled look as the Chinese exploitation companies deploy to the gold site with bulldozers and other efficient machines limiting exploitation chances of the villagers. The Chinese companies, according to them, exploit beyond their limits by disrespecting the marketed boundaries, that they no longer have the opportunity to work. They present authorization papers when we complain, and if we insist, they make calls, and we are encircled by security forces. Once the Chinese exploiters pass, the locals manage in the abandoned peace, which also serve as dead traps, as most of them are not covered after end of exploitation. This often results to accidents. The Minister has demanded that after exploitation, we must restore the trap. It is naturally that one who has exploited must do it. Not only children are caught in the web, also adults. There are accidents, for example, the noyades. General exploitation of gold in Kambele 3 and its environs, according to some environmentalists, is carried out without respect of environmental norms. The crude exploitation means rather worsen the poverty situation of the population. Talking point is up next. Thanks for staying with us in Talking Point. Our guest is one of the persons who have been asking for the liberation of prisoners in the Republic of Cameroon to prevent a catastrophic situation that could emerge from a possible case of COVID-19 in one of the incarceration centers in the country. Senior Barista Ashu Emmanuel Abo, member of the Cameroon Bar Association and National President of Reform Political Party. Thanks for coming. Thank you, Wabila. Good evening. Good evening to the viewers. It's a pleasure once more to be with you. The COVID-19 figures are still rising in Cameroon, though the number of uh, treated cases are also increasing. The number of confirmed cases and dead cases are increasing a little faster. What is not being well done? Why is Cameroon unable to stop the figures from increasing? Well, I think um, we have to 
give some small praises to the Ministry of uh, Health for the efforts that they are putting on uh, so far. In fact, the figures are rising, but if you look at those figures compared to <laughs> big, big superpowers like America, you see that uh, our figures are still a child's play. Because uh, with that, we're talking of 300,000 in America, and what else? You see, our own COVID started almost at the same time with theirs, but uh, you see, uh, their own is skyrocketing, whereas we are still below 1,000. Uh, 1, so anyway, I think um, they are doing their best. Uh, the natural pharmacopoeia of uh, the Africans is helping us, and God also is helping us because, don't forget, this is the place where woman was created. So God will not allow uh, his creation to be wiped out. <laughs> I think we are being protected by God. Nobody will die except by the leave of God, and uh, that's the reason why I think COVID-19 is not the thing that is meant to wipe out Cameroon. And we are close to 1,000 now, 1,000 confirmed cases and about 10 deaths. Yes, uh, you see, is you have 10 deaths, 10 deaths, but you also have 43 uh, uh, recoveries. 43 mm. recoveries as of now. As of yesterday. Yes, as of, uh, as of yesterday. And I think that uh, our health personnel is doing its best. And you see, I would have loved to, to ask them a few questions because... I have the impression that they are well, they are doing their best but they are not doing they are not going far enough because if you look at the works of chinese the chinese carried out experiments on the, the corpses and reported that many of these patients die as a result of uh, suffocation because their respiratory tract has been blocked by muco by kata so i mean i, I ask a question like uh, a layman is it not possible for our doctors like in the case of uh, sinusis to introduce a pipe in the trachea and pull out this mucor when they see that this patient is about to be suffocated. Can they not evacuate the respiratory tract using a pipe like they do in the case of sinuses? Or can they not provoke vomiting so that this patient sends out whatever is there? Uh, we are not going into the technicalities of the, uh, the matter. We are looking at the uh, management. Uh, probably they must have the technicians, the medical experts must have taken into consideration your proposal and um, talking about the management of coronavirus, you're one of the people who have been asking for the liberation of prisoners in Cameroon. The uh, Cameroon Patriotic Diaspora issued a petition asking for the liberation of all the detainees. The Network of Human Rights Defenders in Central Africa did same, asking for the liberation of detainees. The United but Nations. The United Nations also. But till now, uh, maybe uh, it's because we don't yet have a case in one of the incarceration centers. We pray that case should not come because if it, if it does, <laughs> you, I just imagine one COVID-19 case in New Bell, you'll be talking about between 15,000 to 20,000 dead. Uh, that would be a collective death sentence that is passed on innocent people so that's why we say it is better to release these people i mean they should contact the experts and they will be told it's possible to suspend whatever procedures they are, they are facing maybe for three I months was, i was going to ask you that question because as a legal mind people have committed crimes and they have been detained they have been judged and detained uh, they have been given various uh, sentences and they are still serving their prison terms. And uh, you're asking that they should be set free. I agree. I agree with you. You see, but the problem is that the sentences, the terms they are serving are not life jail or they're not death sentence. If somebody is given 30 years imprisonment, if we are faced with a case of a, a, a pandemic that is likely to wipe out everybody, you leave them there. I mean, they will all die. They were not convicted to they were not convicted to death so that they will remain there for COVID to come and kill them. Allow them go to the houses, let them stay safe, let them stay confined, and when they are well again, you can call them to come and finish their sentence. You see, but you see, when we say they should be released, it's not. It is not a matter of freeing them totally because of the danger that everybody is facing. Let them go home. When things are over, we can call them to come and finish their term. Mm. See, that's that's the point. But, but some uh, civil society leaders are saying that uh, they will become more of. Um, a danger to society. Some of the hardened, suspected hardened criminals, or since they have already been condemned, 
they are called criminals, they could become danger to the society. Well, you and I know those who are called, uh, those, of the, those, those who are in prison and who are the hardened criminals. Those are people who are faced, who have already received their death sentence or they are waiting for it. You see, they, how many are they? They are not up to a hundred. Those that type, they're not up to a hundred. If you remove the bulk of the prisoners, in fact, you'll be left with a small core that you can manage. Those people who have been convicted to death sentence, well, if they remain there and die, there's no problem because that is what they were convicted to, to, to face, death sentence. So if you set free those who, have, who, are not, who don't have a death sentence, you can now manage the small number that is left there. But if you keep 15,000 or more than, more than that in Kondengi, it would be terrible if that pandemic were to introduce itself to that prison. And the uh, petition of the Cameroon Patriotic Diaspora highlighted the, 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 the point that many of them are being detained illegally. They were arrested illegally and they are being detained illegally. And besides the fact that there is a coronavirus pandemic, they should be freed because they are being detained illegally. Well, that the point of legality cannot be examined uh, on a TV panel because it is a matter for the judges to, to examine. If the court finds that, that somebody is being detained illegally, we have habeas corpus, we have all those procedures, they will be set free by the court. You see, but we are saying that as a matter of national health, these people should be set free so that they don't die in detention because they are being threatened, their life is being threatened by a pandemic, a worldwide pandemic. Barista Emmanuel Ashu, the Minister of Territorial Administration at Tanganji Paul, has said all persons who are uh, putting up initiatives to raise funds, political parties including the CRM, the PCRM of uh, Maurice Campton Cabra Libby respectively, and even Honorable Nuran of the uh, PCRM political party, uh, doing so illegally. It is out of law. It is an illegal action to raise funds f during a crisis period like this. What do you think about that? Well, for, for once, I think I will side with the minister. I will side with the with minister Tanganji for once because this minister is very correct. A political party has the right to call on its members for contributions. But remember, a, politici a political party has no right to receive funding from abroad. You have no right to appeal for funding to the world at large. The minister even went for that to cite the laws that govern those type of fundings. You see, Cabral Libby did this nonsense during the, 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 the presidential and the legislative elections. And nobody talked. So he is continuing. The minister allowed him because they ought to have stopped him when he started that, that nonsense of calling people who were alive to call, give him money. It was illegal and he was not stopped. So you see where it has led us. He is continuing. Now he has been joined by uh, 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 MRC, which, I mean, who think that it is their right? It is not their right. They have a right as a political party to call on their members for contributions. They don't have the right to call on the public at large to give donations into any fund. The minister is very correct. That our fund should be supervised by the government because we don't know what they are going to do with it. We don't know what use will be made of that money. We don't know where they are where carrying the money to. In fact, there are so many things that are unknown about those funds. Again, it is a criminal offense to raise, to, to call on the public at large to bring money. It's a, it's a criminal offense. You can be prosecuted for aggravated uh, uh, um, uh, false pretenses. Aggravated false pretenses. You can be prosecuted for that. Professor Maurice Camto is a senior legal luminary. He is the president of the CRM political party. And there is a whole battery of legal minds in that political party. Are they ignorant of that law? Well, you ask them that question. Violate the law? <laughs> Please ask them that question because I ask, there are so many things that they have been doing that you ask yourself, why are they behaving this, this way? You look at the other one that he did. I mean, giving an ultimatum to the head of state. Head of state. Where on earth does that exist under the constitution of this country or under any law? It's not possible. It's not feasible. It is not acceptable that a political party will stand up and say, we are giving you this number of days to do this type of thing. It's not acceptable. Or else we'll take our responsibility. Oh, my God. No. You see, this party, I don't know what is wrong with them. They are uh, creating a pattern of uh, uh, 
of disobedience, of legal disobedience. See, they, they just they just systematically disregard the law, which is wrong. I say it's wrong because you should, we are in a republic, abide by the law. Without the law, there is no society. Barrister, maybe you should explain a little further so that we can understand the illegality of this action of collecting funds uh, during such periods of a crisis. What is illegal about it? Number one, political parties are authorized to collect funds from their members. In this particular case, the appeal for funds is made to the world at large. It is not party contribution. It is an appeal for funds to the world at large. And that type of appeal can be heeded by foreign governments, by foreign associations, by foreign nationals. And if that is the case, if, if one person sent, one foreigner sends in money, it becomes funding from a foreign source, which is permitted, which is a, a prohibited by the law governing political parties. A political party should not re receive funding from outside. That is the first point. Secondly, you have laws that govern that type of activity. Why don't they comply with the laws? They don't. They're not complying with anything. They just say, well, you can understand them. They think that they, go, they won the elections and uh, they are in their right to put out, uh, carry out acts of government. But I think it is total tomfoolery because you cannot have two captains on a ship. For the time being, we have one, one captain that is known and uh, you have to respect the laws of the land. Laws have been put in place for that type of activity. You want to carry out that one, please respect those laws. If you don't, what you are doing is illegal. And as I said, there is criminal provision because you they can be prosecuted for aggravated um, false pretenses. All right, Barita, what are some of the things apart from releasing the prisoners that can be done which will uh, enhance the fight against COVID-19 in Cameroon, which will prevent the figures from continuously rising? Well, the first thing that should be done is, uh, is to sensitize, sensitize the population so that everybody leaving his house must wear a mask. Everybody must wear a mask because this is a virus that is in the air. We don't know from which direction it's coming. We don't know from which direction the wind will blow it. Please, everybody should wear a mask when leaving the house. That way you protect yourself from contamination. When you reach the house, please try to use uh, a, a cotton mask. Cotton mask because that one, you see, when you're using this, their paper mask, it has a lifespan of about three hours. The cotton mask can be used the whole day. It's strong enough, it can be used the whole day. When you reach your house, you wash it. Take your bath because if, it, if the, we've been told that that virus uh, uh, lands on hair and cloth. So when you reach the house, you have to take your bath with soap and shampoo so that if it is on the hair, let it go away. Then, of course, the clothes also have to be uh, disinfected. That way, we are going to be sure that we are not carrying the virus from anywhere. And then people should, we should forget this, our old habit of shaking hands and embracing people. I've seen people still continuing with this habit of embracing people. It's wrong. You don't know where this man is coming from. You don't know who, who this person has been in contact. He comes and you embrace him. If he has a virus, of course you take it. You welcome it. So we should avoid shaking hands. We should avoid embracing people. And uh, when we are leaving our houses, let us all have our masks on. I have, I'm not putting one on because if I put a mask here now, this is it right here. If I put it on, I will not be able to, I mean, you will not understand me because the speech will be difficult. All right, Senior Barista Shue Manuel Agbo, member of the Cameroon Bar Association and National President of Reform Political Party. Thanks for coming. You're welcome. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for staying with us. Goodbye.